All right, let's get started. Let's see. This shows that I'm still hosting C Sharp Fritz. Exited host mode. See, it says still hosting C Sharp Fritz. Okay, man. Alright, well, hopefully it'll pick up soon. Exited host mode and chatty, good. Uh, let's make sure our fonts are big enough to read. I think they are. Bump them up a little bit. No, 16 should be good. Oh, I see what the issue is. This should be 100. There we go, that's better. Alright, so... Today... I want to work on the specification a bit more. And my specification supports... a bunch of stuff, right? Um, and I want to verify that it's well tested, and most of these features really only matter if we're running against a real database. So I now have support for running these against a real database. Um, and I can test criteria, which I think I have already a test for. Um, I haven't done order by, group by, paging, so we'll just we'll run through some of these. We're going to want to add, if we're going to have paging, we're going to add more of something to page through. I think posts would be good. So uh, let's just make a little loop here for that. And let's just say I've got a hundred blog posts. Uh, and for each one of those we're gonna add a new thing. I'll build it at entity post hot post. Oh look, my thing finally noted that I'm starting. Great, maybe somebody will actually join now. Uh, Alright, dot has data, and this will be a new post. I have to give it an ID, so... Hey, Ardella, so Paul's good over there. Hey, how's it going? Wanadza? Probably butchering your name, I apologize. Let's move this chat a little closer to where I'm working so I can see it. Um, Alright. So, author. Go away. Oh, there's people joining now. Nice. It's amazing what happens when Twitch actually works. Author ID equals author.id blog ID equals test. Prints it perfectly. Ha! Nice. Uh, test blog.id so I'm just creating some test data that I'm going to use for the uh, integration tests for the specification here in a minute. Um, all right, title equals extra post sub i, and then id equals. Uh, I already have a two three four, so let's just make it three hundred plus i. They don't have to be sequential. Alright, so theoretically, when I run this, I should now have like 300 posts. Or, sorry, 100, 101 posts for this first blog ID. And so I'm going to update a test to verify that. So let's look at this last test here. It says, go get a blog using this post. Uh, blog post spec, spec specification grabbing valid blog ID which is a constant uh, then asserting on a few things like it should not be null, it should have a certain name and its post count should be greater than zero I think it should be greater than a hundred now because we just added all those posts so let's just check and see if that works now the cool thing about how I'm running these tests is that I'm running them uh, in a docker file so, or, or in a Docker container, rather. So, if we look at the uh, run test batch file, 
it's going to do a docker compose build step. I only need that because I keep changing my tests and other things. Um, and it won't rebuild the container that the tests live in unless I add this step. But if the tests, like if I were doing this in a CI system, I could skip this uh, and just do the docker compose up. Um, because it's going to be a new build agent anyway. So I think that should work. I haven't got that part working yet. Uh, Docker Compose Up is going to run the containers, and there's two of them. We'll look at the Docker Compose YAML in a second to show that. Uh, and one of them is going to hold these integration tests. The other is going to hold SQL Server. And so let's just take a look at that. My Docker Compose file is up here, and it's pretty simple. Um, it has the tests in one container, and those are built with the Docker file that I'm going to show you in a second. And it has this wait host environment variable because I'm using uh, a third party tool called wait that you can configure to wait in a few different ways. You can have it wait for a certain amount of time or you can wait until a certain port starts listening. And that's what I'm doing. So it's going to wait until the database container support 1433 responds. Uh, and until that happens, it's just going to sit there and, and, you know, periodically check. Uh, meanwhile, over here, this is a Docker uh, container that's going to hold our database. This is Microsoft SQL Server running on Ubuntu Linux. Uh, we're configuring its password to be this very secure password right here uh, and accepting the end user license agreement. This database is only used uh, in the course of running these integration tests, so the, the security model on here is not important. It's not going to have any real data in it. So let's look at the Docker file. Now the Docker file, again, this is just for the integration tests. and I don't actually need that, I discovered, so that can go away. Um, but we're going to start from the Microsoft Core SDK 2.2 and we're going to basically copy everything into it and then we're going to run, well we're going to also add that wait utility to it and we run wait and once wait is finished then we run this .NET test uh, and in the results directory we're going to throw that into slash var slash temp where that's important is if we look back at the docker compose uh, you can see I'm mapping locally test results to uh, in the container var temp. So that's going to be how I get the test results out of that container so I can see them. All right, so if we drop into PowerShell here and we do run tests here, you'll see this in action. So here it's building my test container uh, and now it is running Docker Compose and, or Docker Compose up rather, and there it built SQL Server. It happened very fast because I've done it before on this machine. Uh, the first time you do this, it takes a while because it has to pull the images down. But the images are now local on my on my box. Uh, just ran unit tests, one of one successful. I've got logging turned on for EF Core to help me with diagnostics. Uh, and here you see it ran all those tests. It took about four seconds. Three passed, one failed. And here's the issue. I expected it to be greater than 100, but it only found one. Uh, and I think I know why that is. So let me... Let me come back here. I didn't actually rerun my code because I have to do this. So if you make schema changes or uh, what should I call this? Uh, seed data or schema changes, um, then you have to delete the database and then create it because otherwise it'll just keep the database it had previously and it won't actually seed it with the new stuff. So I needed to do that. So let's run this again. I don't even have to build it locally because it's going to build it inside the Docker container. And so here we go. And we should see a bunch of Entity Framework stuff here in a second. Oh, and I should do that. I should do that. There, I just tweeted some stuff. Mark myself as online. Um. Okay, so when you do the database thing, you'll get these errors, but it still actually works. So, yeah, this is pretty new to me as well, Align Dev, saying it's a good use for containers. Um, I just discovered it uh, a few days ago, so I'm pretty excited about it. It's, it's working well for me. Um, what I haven't yet gotten to work, I haven't tried yet, is putting this into my dev pipeline. So I'll be really excited if I can get this running in my Azure DevOps pipeline for this package. Alright, so it says it's failing with this error, but it still works. 
Um, the reason I have that drop database or delete ensure deleted on the database turned off is because you can see this takes a lot longer. Uh, it's actually destroying the database before each test. Um, and there's four tests, which is not a lot, but uh, it's taken a while. So I don't want to do that every time. Um, these are read-only uh, tests. It's a specification, so it's just running queries. So I don't need to destroy the database normally. I just need to do it when I make changes to how I'm seeding it or, or to its schema. All right, so what are you doing here? You should be doing something. How many tests have we done? So like there's my there's all my new posts. That's working. Not sure what that null column is. Blog ID content. Okay, I didn't give it any content. That's fine. So the seeding is working. Creating is working. But this is failing. I'll just Okay, there it goes. Kill it. Yeah. Right, let me run it one more time without that and sure delete it. It should run faster. I just want to verify now I should have all passing tests. Uh, and the reason why I'm adding that, that data is because we're going to start doing paging tests. And I want to make sure those, those work. Yeah, I really only needed to delete the database once. Uh, it's just easy for me to to do it there in that constructor, but then it does it like for every test. So now there we go, four out of four pass. So yay! Be nice if this were a different color. So, you know, it should be green or something. All right. And the way that batch file is set up is it actually tears down the uh, container when it's done. So the SQL Server container gets uh, destroyed here. Aborting on container exit. So this just this just exited the test one. Um, and now the SQL Server one is supposed to be aborting. And there it goes. All right, so now let's write a test. So we're in we're in here, and I want to have a test that will let me page through posts. I think um, just to make it easy, let me go over here, and we'll add posts as another top level thing. I wouldn't necessarily do this in a real app, but this is just for tests. In a real app I'd probably want to say that posts like belong to a blog and in an aggregate, the uh, the aggregate design pattern, which would make it so that I couldn't get to posts directly, I would get to posts from a blog. Um, but in this case we want to do some paging over that, so we'll just keep it like this. Let's create a new window. Let's go to eShop on web and look at their sample for paging. So this eShop on web is a Microsoft sample, if you're not familiar with it. It's uh, got an ebook that I wrote that's a hundred and some pages that's uh, free. And I am looking for a specification in here that does paging. Like this, catalog filter paginated specification. Because I want something like this. I'm going to post paginated specification, I guess. So I'll get all the posts for a given uh, blog ID, let's say. So need that. Let's come into our sample specifications. Look here. We'll just paste it in here and we'll make this a um, posts by blog paginated spec. We don't need to type the whole thing out. Base specification of post and copy that to here. Now what do I need? I need skip and take, that's my paging. And then I want to have the post, or the, uh, the blog ID in here. And so this will be the filter, and the filter is just going to be post such that you know, error function uh, that it's blog ID equals. So p.blog ID equals blog ID. So that's the filtering part. And then all I need is this apply paging to make that work. So this should be done. Uh, we'll save it, move it to its own class, and then we'll go write our test. And our test uh, will be gone here, and we'll say 
that we can, well, let's say, get a second page of posts using post by blog paginated spec. How about that? All right. So we're going to do a list async again, but this time instead of this specification, we're going to do posts by blog paginated specification with still the blog ID, but also now the skip and take. So we're going to let's, let's just do this the way we would do it in production. Um, the way paging works is you skip so many records and then you take so many records. So let's say that my page size equals 10, and I want to go to page 2, so it, their index is 0, right? So int page index, page 2 would be 1, right? Index of 1. Uh, and so then my first parameter is skip. I want to skip the page index times the page size, and then I want to take the page size, like that. All right, so that should give me the second page worth of stuff. And this is not good because why? Paginated spec takes int, skip. Those are, those are ints. Cannot convert from a spec to an I spec of blog. I'm not sure what it's talking about. Post by blog, paginated spec. Oh, because it's the blog repository. That's why. Uh, all right, let's create a page repository. So this blog repository expects this list to return a list of blogs, not a list of pages. Or sorry, posts. So I need a post repository. So we'll just create it here because I'm not using it anywhere else yet. So var post repo equals new ef repository of post. And that needs the db context that I have up above. And so then we'll just take this and do this. And now it should be much happier. There we go. All right. Um, we'll get rid of this not and all. So what this is going to return is a post. Uh, I don't want singular default anymore. Let's just say dot to list. All right. Now this will return a list of something, a list of post. Good. And we should say that we want result dot count dot should dot be there should be ten of them. Should be the same as page size. Alright. And result dot first dot uh, post dot ID. Yeah, ID dot should be uh, and what should that be? Well, let's look at our output. We we added two, three, four, right? And then three, did I really start at three something? Yeah, maybe, that's weird, 371. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, this one, 362. Why are these, these are all over the place. Why is 372 way down here? That's just weird. I don't understand this sequence. Well, if they're in order, I mean, I started them at 300, so this should be the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, should be, I don't know, let's say 310. It's probably not right, but I'll fix it if it's wrong. All right, so we'll say this should be 310 for the ID. Um, and then we can check the last one as, as well. Result dot last dot ID should be three nineteen ish. All right, that's enough to tell me that I got the first page of, or in this case, the second page of results. Um, so now let's run this.
Now I can run this with code coverage turned on too, I haven't done that yet. Uh, but then I should be able to verify just how much of the base specification I'm testing. Because the base specification and the specification evaluator, these two things up here in the top right, uh, those are really what I want to test. Two failures, what? Alright, now theoretically, these test results are showing up here, which they are. Uh, maybe. Yeah, okay, if I sort by date. So there's that, and I can pull this into Visual Studio and see the test results. So here's what actually failed, with which is a little easier to follow than, um, than the other. Alright, so now it's saying it can't find the class posts in the database. Invalid object name posts. But I know, because I can see what you did. All right, select from posts. Migrations, I'm not running migrations. I'm just using uh, Ensure Created. And then uh, it's using the seed feature that's new in EF Core 2.2, I think it was. So it's not really new, it's like a year old. But uh, here's how I'm creating the data, it's in this on model creating. Uh, and so it should be creating a post here. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Oh no, I did do, right there. You're allowed to call has data multiple times, aren't you? Maybe that's the issue, maybe it's not calling it multiple times. I thought that's how, how you added more stuff, but maybe it takes in a collection. Maybe I need to create a collection of posts and then call this once. Maybe that's what I need to do. Um, but that doesn't explain why the table's not there. I should have created the table. Alright. Let's, let's try adding these to a list first. And post list add. And this can come out of there, go down here, and this just becomes add, and then this becomes that. All right. Now, since I changed a bunch of stuff in this, let's make sure this builds because it doesn't look like it's going to. It needs a namespace. Now we'll build it. Now it succeeds. Alright, so now since I changed that, I need to come back up here and tell it to delete the database. So it'll recreate it. And then we're going to rerun our container based tests. And we'll take a look and see what it actually builds because it should definitely, it's going to log it, um, and it should definitely create a posts table, which seemed to be the error it was giving me. So now it's running unit tests, there's only one of them, it's quick. Now it's running integration tests, it's going to delete the database, create the database, there's the drop. Ignore this error, there it goes. Of course, it has to do it four times. Can you set breakpoints with these tests? Um, doubt it, because the tests themselves are running in a container. So there might be a way to do that, but I don't know. I don't usually debug in the tests if I can help it, because um, they should be small enough that you shouldn't have to. But of course, you know, sometimes it is nice to be able to do so. I haven't tried uh, with this setup. It's still pretty new to me. Um, I just I just discovered someone that was showing how to do the the basic parts of running a SQL container and having something else talk to it. Uh, all right, cool. Look at that. Five. Our our new one failed, which is fine. I kind of thought it might. Um, I don't know what 
how it failed, but let's just grab this TRX file and see. So there's our new failure. And I'm just probably off by one. Yeah, off by one. So expected first to be 310, but found 309. So we'll just change that. And we'll be good. So let's make this. 309, 10 more than that, should be 318, because it's 10 total inclusive. Uh, let's turn off the delete so our tests run faster again. I think the main issue was that I was not doing the seed correctly. And that should be good, so we should be able to run these again. For some reason PowerShell doesn't want to print out the last couple of lines in my prompt at the end, so I have to hit enter for it to show it, otherwise it just looks like it was hanging. Alright, so without having to rebuild the database every time, instead of taking a minute it takes about 15 seconds, so it does definitely help. There's the unit test, took 2 seconds, and here's the integration test, took 4 seconds. And now it's done, and hey, look, it gave me my prompt back. All right, so that's uh, that's commit worthy. We got another test working. So we'll do git add dot git commit dash n added a paging test push. All right, maybe mounting source code directly to Docker container can help in applying breakpoints. Something like VS Tools for Docker does. Probably so. Yeah, um, I am mounting. The, uh, the test results already, so I could also mount, you know, multiple mounts, right? Um, I could also mount the actual test source code folder, and then, or, or the bin folder, really, is probably all I need, so I can get to the PDB file. Uh, I think that's all I need for, for debugging to work. I'm not, uh, not very expert at that kind of thing, so probably I would just go Googling to see if someone else has done it before I would try and spend a lot of time on that myself. Alright, so can we do code coverage though? That I think is, is more interesting to, to check out here. So um, I think I just need to say collect coverage true and I just need to change that in the docker file here. So this .NET test command, uh, let me see what I've already got in here. So I'm already collecting code coverage, I think, in my Azure pipeline. So it should have the command arguments that I need just to make sure I get it right. Yeah, so here's my collect coverage equals true and tell it the format. I don't know if I care about the format, but sure, why not? So I think I can take that and put it right here. Uh, da -da -da that. Click coverage true. I'll put format. Where does it go with that coverage? Because mm. I really want it to go into the test results folder, I think. So, .NET test code coverage specify output file. Uh, code coverage report. I might have to just copy it from wherever it goes. Or maybe it'll automatically go in the results directory. Maybe I don't need to do anything. Let's see what it does if I don't change anything. Maybe, it just, maybe it'll just work. Um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? No, I don't want to get push. Don't do that. Alright, let's go look at our test results output. Can you give me coverage here, maybe? I'm guessing probably not, but we'll see. Alright, no code coverage file. Well, I probably can use Visual Studio's code coverage directly in here. Does it have anything about code coverage? 
Let's see it. I don't see any way to see code coverage from this. Alright, let's look and see. Did it tell me anything about where it put it? Usually it'll say it generated a code coverage file. So there's my results file, went there. Turn down the logging verbosity on EF. It's way too much. All right, so there's that. All right, perfect. Generated report there. So it's under unit tests. And it didn't seem like it did it for the integration test, right? Like this one finished, and then it calculated the coverage and showed it. My one unit test gave me 42% coverage. That's nice. Um, but what about the integration test? Results file went there. Coverage file went there. Generating report. Alright. So down here, told me that. And it didn't do anything else after that. Hmm. It ran the same dot in a test. I'm not sure why it's not giving me code coverage there. Alright, let me see. No test. How do you not have coverage? It's not really useful to me. Um, done a test code coverage. Output to folder. Results directory, we did that. Alright, this doesn't sound good. Code coverage with user defined file name and path. It's an open bug from March. It'd be nice if you guys did something about that. Alright. In the meantime, now that I know where the file is, I should be able to add a command to copy it. Um, somewhere I can get to, perhaps. sec, I gotta check something. isn't reporting coverage, but I need to get that other file out of the container 
best thing I could do is put it into that test results folder. So I just need to add a copy command to my Docker file so that after the .NET test happens, it moves that. So here, we're going to do all that, and then we're going to say, and how can I copy it? I'll just do copy or move rename. I guess it depends. It's, it's Linux, so it's going to be MV. All right. I don't know. Uh, is that running Windows? I don't know what that's running on. We'll try MV. Um, let's go find that path again. Right there. Move this. No. This. Move that to slash var slash temp. Alright. That might work. Um, okay. Docker. Docker file. Move. Command. Run. Do you have to run move? I don't think so. Okay, that looks like it works. My other question is Docker image Microsoft SDK um, that core. That's pretty much the one I want, right? Official net. There we go. Okay. multi-architecture. I just want to know if the MV command is going to work. I guess we'll just run it and find out. So let's make sure we saved everything. Everything still works. Alright, let's see if we can move that output file. And if it works, it should show up here. And I still have to figure out why code coverage is not running on the integration tests. As it really should be. There's my unit test. Hey, look at that, it worked. Wow. Okay. Um, now what can I do with that? Let's uh, open it with code, I guess. Alright, that's just saying all the things and whether or not they got hit. Alright, that's fine. Um pretty sure it doesn't include the other one. So it's something with this error here. This cross targeting thing. I think this must be what's causing the integration test to bomb right after they're done. I need to locate repository with working directory that contains directory app source or Dallas specification. Build tasks. Build cross targeting. Warning, anyway. This, this shouldn't be a thing. see why that is not running. That doesn't seem like the issue because that's just a warning. It's a git target. 
Why is it doing anything with git? Microsoft build task git. Alright, what did it do before, right after it finished? Right here. The very next thing it does is report here, calculating coverage result, right? It ought to do that. So it did the result file. I wanted to combine things in that result file too. Um, I can use report generator for that. Because eventually I want to generate this uh, as a nice report that I can see in my build. I might already have some of that working. Um, I wonder if I tell it to only run the test on the integration tests and not the unit tests. That shouldn't matter for this though. Alright, I'll have to punt on code coverage for now. Let's let's keep on adding some different tests. I like that this worked. That lets me get the coverage file out of there, which I'm gonna need later. And I might be able to just run my run test script from Azure DevOps. I haven't gotten to that yet either, but we'll see. Alright, so I don't have Uh, I don't have a nice code coverage visualization right now that tells me what I have or have not covered. So let's just kind of eyeball it. So looking at specification, these last two tests are the only ones that even use a spec. This one uses blog posts with spec, and this one uses post by blog paginated spec. And the things that they do, if we look at those two specs, uh, are filter based on the ID, and then this one adds to the includes, uh, and this other one does apply paging. Alright, so if we're looking at base specification, we can say we've done criteria, check. We've added to that list of includes, check. We haven't done anything with include strings, so that would be something to try. Uh, and that would be pretty easy. And then uh, we haven't done any of these ordering group by, but we did do these. I think. Is paging enabled? Did I do something to enable that? Apply, oh, I called apply paging. Right, okay. That's what I did. Um, yeah, so let's do this one because it's trivial. I'm going to do the exact same thing as this, but we're going to do it with a string. So, blog with post spec, blog with posts using string. And this just becomes posts. Like that. Let's include strings or something like that. Uh, include strings, right? Yeah. So include strings. All right. And we'll put that in its own file. We'll go back to our tests. At some point I'll rename those tests. The so test name for that class is not very good. Should include posts. And spec with string include. Okay, this is blog string spec. It should do the exact same thing it did before. Right, um, so now we just run over here and run the tests again, and we should be up to like six of them now. And then the next one we're going to do after that, I'm assuming this one's going to work, uh, is ordering. That should be pretty easy. So let's do that on the p on the posts because I got a bunch of posts, so I can order those easily. So the paginated spec should that support ordering? 
Let's just create a new one. So, uh, post by blog um, ordered. And this will just take the blog ID. And we'll say bool um, is ascending. I guess. All right, and then it'll be that, and that'll be uh, if is ascending, then we'll do order by host. What will you take? Order by what? Ah. Can I use like a method? All right, order by equals. Uh, a lambda. Funk of post comma object. That should work. Can't be used because its setter is inaccessible. All right, how do I use order by then? Private set, private set. Is it add order by, apply order by. All right, so I want to apply order by. Apply order by else apply order by descending. All right, that should be good. Let's go check if our tests all passed. Hey, they did. Look at that. All right, so now we can do some ordering on posts. Um, the initial one where it's ascending, that one's going to be basically the same order that they're in otherwise, but that's fine. I suppose I could have given it some random content to make it order differently, but I'm not too worried about it right now. So let's check ordering. Uh, get posts, get posts, ordered, get posts, with ordered spec, don't need any of that, let's push this uh, post repository up to the top, so up here, do public EF repository post. No. All right, that looks good. So now back down here at the bottom, um, post repository is gone. This is going to be underscore post repository and here as well that goes away so the result is just give me that and it should be in the correct order uh, result that count it's gonna be all of them uh, but the first ID should be two three four and the last ID should be 399 or whatever it was Right. Int, int, int. That's the wrong one. Um, what did we call it? This one. Right. Why are you red? We're good. All right, so now, once we've got this one, see, you're lying to me, Visual Studio. You get this red squiggle, but there's no errors. We're gonna do the same thing. Descending. Get post with ordered spec, descending. And this'll be that. Log builder. Ascending is false. And 
it should be basically reversed. And let's run that test and see. So over here, run tests. First try. Oh, what's this? Oh, we're gonna unit test after. That's interesting. So it's not deterministic on that. Okay, so why are you only generating code coverage on the unit test? Oh, I know what it is. I don't have the stuff I need for the other one. That's that's the problem. Um, edit the project file, add coverlet stuff here. When I created the uh, integration test project, I did not add those things. Did I? No. Let's try that now. All right, one more time. The issue is gonna be whichever one it does second, it's gonna copy the coverage file over top of which everyone did first, so that's not going to be ideal. But I'll sort that out in a minute. Nice. All right, so look at that code coverage: seventy-three percent, ninety-three percent. All right, so I want to be able to combine these. Let's look at our code here. Just the one file. Um, let's see. Dot .NET test collect coverage merge results. It's port for yeah, I don't think this exists yet. Merge that, merge that. I was, I was looking at this earlier. I don't think it'll do it. There's some people working on it. And I know I can do it with something other than .NET test. Right? So I can do this merge with on coverlet. But I want to use .NET test. Let's see. As of February, Coverlet didn't support solution-wide runs, which is what I'm doing. And he's just suggesting that you use Report Generator to merge them, right? Which is fine, but then I'm still back to, I've got to copy them as separate files. So my move command needs to rename them as it goes. Um, how will I do that? What can I rename them to? So I'm going to move... Oh, I'm only moving unit tests. Huh, alright. This became really easy now. Because I can just do AND and do the other one. So, that's trivial. Uh, that's unit tests. That's unit tests. That's integration tests right there. Bam. And do move and move that our temp uh, okay so this will be var temp whack coverage dot unit dot covertura dot xml that coverage dot integration all right that might work let's try it coverlet has a merge with yeah it does research command code remote yeah I'm doing the same John Callaway nice to see you here um, I'm using report generator for this exact purpose um, 
And I don't know if I, I don't recall if I have it installed right now here as a global. I think I might. But let's see if we get the files output. The next step is going to be to use report generator on them. All right, so everything seems like it worked. Let's see if I get the two files. Unit integration, perfect. All right, so from here, I should be able to do report generator. And it works, right? So then I can say, here's my reports, and that can just be a semicolon, right? And those are in test results. So I can say report generator uh, dash reports colon test results whack and then what's this thing called coverage right coverage dot integration and then it said semicolon right semicolon dot whack test results whack coverage dot in a unit okay there's my reports now I can say uh, target directory dash target directory colon uh, code coverage right and then somewhere I say format right dash I want it to be HTML that's the default anyway so let's just see what this does uh, I don't know what file you're trying to open Report generator dash reports didn't like that. Um, let's see. Do I need to quote them? Sometimes that's a thing. Nope, didn't like that either. So I'm Googling for report generator CLI example. Running on .NET Core with report generator. Yeah. So he's got this nice thing that'll build you what you want. Um, this was code coverage. Reports were. I've got the reports done, that's fine. No history, no plugins, no filters. We'll worry about filters later. They do become important. Um, dash reports, whatever. Okay. .NET report generator DLL. Okay, so he's quoting each one of those. Like this. Maybe. Aha, look at that. It worked. Well, got a different error. Alright. Loading report integration. Loading report unit. Analyzing the classes. Oh, uh, okay, interesting. It wants to use the path that was in the NuGet package. But it did create the report, so let's see. Let's see how bad it is. Okay, look at that. That's not bad. Um, Probably if I click into these, there might be problems. No, everything seems fine. So it gave me some errors, but it seems like it worked. EF spec evaluators at 100% coverage for line coverage and branch coverage. So okay, so I want to see on base spec what have I not covered, and I should be able to scroll. To, ah, that's where it's missing. All right, I can't scroll down and see the file. Callaway's got to run. Am I going to write stuff in the blog post later? Um, yeah, probably eventually. Uh, this will be on YouTube, and if nothing else. So, we'll get to that. Uh, I'll hit, I'll hit export to YouTube at the end of this. 
my YouTube is that for anybody that wants to, to see archives. Okay, so I do get this report that tells me caching and these add include calls are not being called. I really thought add include would be covered though. Paging is good, but we haven't done group by. So we gotta do grouping. Uh, and we gotta do caching if we want to do caching. And for some reason the add includes don't seem to be working. Test coverage isn't detecting them. Um, and this is pretty low. Alright, so what do I want to do with this report generator script that I've got here? Because I don't want to lose that now that I've figured out how to do it. I'm just making another batch file, I suppose. Let's just do that for now. I want to run it in the build at some point, but uh, let's do new text document uh, get coverage dot bat. Yes, I would like to change it. And I would like to open it with code. And I would like to paste this in there and fix that. All right. So theoretically that'll work. Um, let's try it out. We'll come back in here, come back over here. Here's my code coverage report we just looked at. We'll delete that. It is gone. And we'll just double click on get coverage. It does its thing and then it's back. It's back, baby. All right, uh, cool. So, that is something I can check in now, uh, I think. So, Docker file, test project, we added the necessary things to collect coverage. We added some tests. Done a lot of stuff here since my last check in. Uh, ooh, wait, I don't want code coverage to be in there, so I need to add that to my git ignore. Um, Where's my get ignore file? Right there. So code coverage. Whack, code coverage, whack. Alright, so I just do sure. see now. Docker file. Alright, so let's just do it from there. So we'll do our commit message. Um, adding code coverage and doing some other things and more tests. Do that and we'll push it. Okay, so caching. The specifications don't do caching, but they do come in handy for uh, generating the cache key. So uh, if I wanted to get um, a particular blog and I wanted to have caching, like this blog with post spec, there's no reason why this couldn't have caching. Um, we could just say enable cache. And then what does this thing want? The name and the specification and the arguments. So name of blog with post spec and then arguments is just the ID, right? So with that, I would expect to get a cache key off of this spec, I think. So let's do a new test for this. This could actually be a unit test. Um, I'm not going to put it in the unit test project because <clears throat> the specifications that I'm using are all inside the integration test project. I could put those in a shared space, and probably I will at some point. Uh, but for now, let's just go here. We'll create a new one. Public test. Uh, enable cache should set cache key properly. 
var spec equals new blog with post spec for some blog ID. Uh, blog builder dot valid blog ID, like that. Okay. Now, since caching is enabled for it, we should be able to verify that it's cached key. Uh, spec dot cache key dot should be. And what should it be? It should be blog with post spec dash. Uh, let's do a dollar sign. Here, blog builder dot valid blog ID, I believe. Uh, let's go double check my implementation on that. Enable cache does a specification name dash string join dash on args. My arg is just going to be that 234, so I think that's right. It's just a hyphen separated key. That uh, key is what will, would be used by a cache engine, but that's outside of the scope of this. This is just a unit test for whether or not this key is being generated appropriately when this spec says to use it. Uh, so that should be good. Um, let's add a to-do on this. Uh, this could move to the unit test project if specs were mm, shared uh, in separate project. All right, now let's run it. Actually, like I said, this one I can run right here. So, run the test. It's faster from the command line. Boom. Did not work. Why did you not work? Network related while trying to connect. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. This this could be a unit test uh, if it weren't in a class that has a constructor that's doing this and trying to talk to a database. So that database that I'm connecting to that you see up here, this thing is only, this connection string only works inside of that Docker Compose environment where those two containers are next to each other. So I can't run these tests locally. I can only run them inside that Docker container. Uh, and so with that, let's run them. Okay, database is going. Ninety three percent branch coverage. Not bad. Um, and they all passed, so that's cool. Alright, so caching we're done with. Now what else did we have? We had grouping, I think. Um yeah, group by. So what would I group by in my sample data? I guess if I had more authors with more posts, or more blogs with more posts, that would make sense maybe. Uh, and I could group by, maybe I can get a count or something. Um, Not sure the scenario where I need group by is the thing. I don't think I use group by in eShop on web. Um, let me open eShop on web. See if I use it. GitHub doesn't quite have uh, find all references yet. Alright, so here's 
the actual code for this and base specification has group by which has four references um, group by group by and then the evaluator just does it okay group by select many x x I don't have a good scenario for when I need this. Let's see. Link. I definitely don't use it very often. Link. Group by example. Group query results. So, group into groups, variable query list names is an enumerable grouping of string, comma, name. Alright, so we'd have batches based on their last name. That makes sense. Um, right, okay. So, if I wanted to do a group by on, hmm, like how would this work with blogging? Group by something other than a property of the object. First letters, group student by student last name. Okay, that's that's interesting. Now, right now my sample data has just one blog ID uh, and a bunch of titles that just have a different name in them. Um, and this returns something different. This returns a group, a grouping, not a list of standard results. So I'm not sure how to deal with that either. So what if we do a group by a boolean and we just do like whether or not it's an even or odd ID or something like that. So let's try that. That's trivial. So all right. So in here in our tests, we're going to be able to support group by. So take this. Come in here. Uh, group by should work. Properly. We're going to spec. We're going to go and fetch results. And this will be a posts grouped by ID. And we'll create that over here. suffix spec. There's that. Come back in here. Make it that. Make it that. Um, I don't even need to have it be by blog ID anymore. So it won't even have a criteria. Will it? it needs to be. That's fine. Base P true. So it's going to fetch all posts from all blogs. 
but we're gonna do apply group by and group by expression is gonna look like this uh, ID percent who equals zero P such that P dot ID percent to double equals zero. Now that should allow me to get back some groups. And specifically there should be a true group and a false group, I think. So it should look a lot like this. Console rate line student group dot key. So it should be a group with a key of true and a group with a key of false. I think. Move that one out of here. Move that one out of here. Okay. So this list async though, it's not it doesn't know anything about groups. That's the thing that's throwing me off. Spec How do I tell it what to select from the group? Because in my evaluator, include, include, that's fine. In my other evaluator, if there's a group by, what am I doing? There, I'm doing a select many off of it. Okay. How's that going to be different than like an order by? I suppose it'll do like all the even ones first and then all the odd ones. Which is kind of like an order by. Um, let's find my test. Mm, result is that. Supposed to group by ID. Go to definition. Da, 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 apply group by. Okay, that all looks good. Why were things red? All right, I got rid of the constructor argument, so I don't need that. Um, get a result, and we can just assert that the first result should be something. Maybe two, three, four, and then result dot skip one dot take one dot id this will be the second one that should be uh, 300 maybe so if it's gonna do it dot take one dot first alright so my thought here is this did grouping with true first and then false. So in my case, when I say true on uh, whether or not it's even, that means the even ones will be true and the even ones should be first. The first two ones should be 2, 3, 4, and 300. So I think that's right. All right, so now we'll run it one more time. We should be pretty close to 100% test coverage now. failed. Um, let's see, expected 234 but found 301. So maybe it's doing false first? I don't know why the other one was true first. So if it's 301, it should be 301 and then 303, right? So this should be 301 and this should be 303 because it should be grouped by odd or even. Skip one, take one. Yeah, that looks right. I know the first one's right because it told me. I'm guessing the second one's right. The 303.
Bam. Ooh, so close. Expected spec that cash key to be this, but found null. Alright, why would cash key be null? Blog with post spec. That's not even the test I was working on. Um let's look at that TRX file. I don't want Visual Studio again, I want this. Test results, TRX file. Test results. Okay, yeah, that's what you said. Expected cache key to be this, but found null. In group by. Oh, that's interesting. Did I leave that? That's the problem, is I copy pasted and left that. Silly me. Alright. My test was done. Run it again. Now it's gonna work. Let's see what my code coverage is overall. Hundred percent branch coverage, ninety percent everything else, ten out of ten successful. Nice. We'll live with that. So add more tests. Uh it's pretty much all we did, so that's good enough. Okay. Anybody have any questions about what we're doing here? If I do the uh, report thing, get coverage, then that gives me my index file. And I come out here and I can come in to code coverage. I can read the index file and see breakdown. Uh, my uncovered stuff is in base specification. It seems to be the add include methods. Why, why are those, did I do? Blog with posts. Oh, I did base that include, oh, no, that's my problem. I shouldn't be doing that. I should be doing straight add. All right, got it. All right, base specification. Because this is a list, I can just directly add to it instead of calling this. I don't know if that's really a problem, but it is breaking my test at the moment. Um, I could make it so I don't expose that as a list. That might be a, an improvement, actually. Because I really don't want people just willy-nilly adding to these lists. So... I can expose this as an enumerable, I think. And it'll work just fine. But it will make it so. Yeah, I gotta change I specification. So okay, if we make these enumerable now, it will force client code to go through the methods to add those things. Which is what I want. So this should be add include. And so should this. What are you called? I mean, it's not add include string. Uh, I'm not changing the right thing. That's not what I wanted to mess with. Um, okay, include strings and add includes. These just need to be cast 
to a list. And their list of weird stuff. Um, hmm. Do that. Includes no add. All right, that's what I want. And I want the same thing for this other one, except it's just going to be a list of strings. There we go. Build it. Run test coverage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't call that. Because you now have to call the right thing, and the right thing is add include or add include. Alright. Add include. Like that. Now the compiler will force me to use the right thing. I'll do it here as well. Add include. Everything's happy. Run tests. Alright, so I'm basically done writing these integration tests that I want. I'm sure I could probably find some more scenarios and I could probably clean the code up a little bit, but I think I'm in good shape to get it to merge into the master. I did break uh, compatibility because I changed that uh, enumerable. Woohoo, look at that, 100%. Sweet. Uh, so we'll have to check the uh, version number. Alright, so there's that. That's not it. That's not it. Where'd it go? There we go. 100% line coverage. Yay. Okay. So let's do... Let's use VS Code to do our commit here. And we uh, change spec to not expose list. Added tests. Push this up. And let's do a pull request. The other thing, currently my Mm, currently my Azure pipeline runs the test and it only runs that unit test and it works. Uh, depending on how I set that up, as soon as I merge this in, I'm going to get problems. There's no merge request option there. So let's just go out to here and let's see if it tells me it, I should merge that in and it does. So we create this merge and we're going to say adding immigration tests using docker hosted SQL server uh, integration tests will fail if run outside of their docker container modified Base specification and interface need to bump version number. Okay, there's my pull request. Um, I don't think I have the setup to run tests on pull requests. If I look at my builds for this... Oh, there is. Pull request build. Sweet. Alright, so let's see what happens here. I think this is going to fail. I think it's going to try and run my integration tests. And those integration tests are... not going to work outside of a Docker container. And I'm not running the Docker container script anywhere in this build pipeline. 
So that's my next step is to get that Docker container build working on a uh, Microsoft build agent. I don't even know if those have Docker installed. We'll find out. Pretty sure it does. Anybody have any questions? Once I have the Docker container uh, wired up into the pipeline, then everything's just really nice. The, the, the builds will take a little bit of time because they've got to run all those tests. Uh, and they've got to set up the database and everything, and they've got to wait for the database to spin up, and they're also going to have to, you haven't even seen this part, but they're also going to have to copy the images down, which is not fast. Uh, fortunately, Azure is going to have a pretty fast network connection, but it's still just going to take time. Uh, so these builds, currently, if we look at the build history, this is a tiny little project, um, they're taking about two minutes each. I expect that to at double or triple, uh, if not more, once I get this all working. So they're not going to be the fastest builds ever, but they will at least do all the verification, and that's what I'm going for. So this .NET test I expect to fail. tests are all going to bomb because there's no database. Wait for it. Boom. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. All right. So that blew up exactly the way we expected, and everything else stopped, which is fine. That's that's what we figured. Um, because of that, I don't think I can merge this in. Um, let's hear pull requests. I think I have checks required. Yeah, there's an X on there. So it's saying all checks have failed. Your build failed, uh, but you can still merge it because you're an administrator. Um, but I don't want to until I can get that fixed. So basically I can come back in here. I wonder if I can just run my two batch files. Maybe. Uh, where's my code? Here's the code. Here's that. Let's look at my Azure pipeline. Uh, how do I get this out of the way? Get out, get out of here. There we go. Uh, run all the tests. Alright, so currently we're doing this. And I think I want to do a script instead. I think if I were to just go here and say dash script colon, uh, what's it called? Run tests? I think I'm running on a Windows machine, so we should be alright. Run test at bat. Uh, Name, run test script, and then the report generation is actually different too. Because I'm going to say script uh, get coverage dot bat. So with that, I should be able to comment this out, and then comment this out. I wonder if I could have used this wildcard as part of my script. 
bet I could. Uh, but I already did the rename thing, so... Oh, and I had to put them into a, a single folder, so they wouldn't be able to use the same name like this one does. These are in different folders with the same name. I need them to be in the same folder with different names. So, probably I could do some wildcard in the file name, but we'll just leave it alone. Uh, target directory is code coverage. That's good. That's what I was looking for before. Um, code coverage is... we're saying that's the source. I don't know that that's happening. Am I getting the code coverage? Is it putting cobertura.xml in here? I don't see that. Code coverage tool summary. Oh, this is it's gonna generate that. That's fine. That's this is okay. Follows code coverage results. Alright, that might work. I'm not sure. So let's commit this into my branch. Uh, trying to get test script to run in pipeline. And push. Now, I may not get this working today because I got to be done in about 15 minutes, but uh, making good progress. Got to 100% test coverage. That's pretty nice. Let's go back to there and look at this and go to the builds and see what it's doing. So this one didn't take too much longer. It's only 253. I haven't added in the Docker testing stuff though until now. So this one will take much longer. So, have any of you used the specification pattern that are watching? That feel like typing and talking? Does anybody have any question like, why bother? What's the deal with this thing? What's the point? I'm kind of a fan of it, so I'm happy to talk about it if anybody has any questions. Plus, all we're going to do otherwise is watch this uh, build run for a while, which is not that exciting. So. The report generator tool I'm using, let me show you that real quick. Um, there's a link to it from the summary, I believe. Uh, there's the GitHub link, is good. So I'll throw a link to this in the chat for you. I've been using this with a few clients and some of my open source projects lately. Um, and it's pretty nice. One of the things I like about it is it will take in as many different report files as you want and then generate output from it. So that that's handy. Um, you can install it as a, as a global tool. So this uh, CLI. Is, is the tool that you can run from your console, which I was just doing. Um, but you can also install this Azure DevOps extension from the marketplace, which is nice. So then it just integrates with your builds. Okay, we're on the test script. Nice. And it is actually working. Nicer yet. Alright, so... Uh, this is going to take longer, like I said. It's doing the pull. This could work. We'll see. this works, this will be amazing. The thing about this is, like, normally if you're doing integration testing, you have to have some sample test database stood up somewhere. Uh, and if you're doing that with any kind of CI/CD process, then inevitably you lock down your process to being, you know, one at a time, one build at a time. Like, right now I've just got free Azure DevOps for my open source project, so I've only got one build agent available to me anyway. 
But let's say you have a bigger team. You got, you know, seven or eight devs. People are working in parallel. Pull requests might get merged at any time. Not to mention the fact that when you merge a pull request, it's going to run a build on the master branch or whatever your main branch is. But also, as people are adding pull requests or, or updating pull requests, builds are running on those as well, right? And so you've got your master branch and however many different pull requests are currently in flight. Anytime a commit hits any of those, it's going to trigger a build. If all those builds are hitting a shared test database and some of your tests are manipulating data, there's a very strong chance that one test is going to break the results from another test. Um, and that's painful, right? And, and keeping that shared database up to date uh, is, is painful and um, the, whole, the whole thing is just not ideal, right? It becomes a, a tightly coupled uh, problem for, for that scenario. So the reason I'm excited about this stuff that we just did today is that now you can take your entire test database, package it up as just a script, right? Like I didn't have to install anything. I didn't have to do anything to get this to work. The, the entirety of, of this working is this file right here and more importantly this file right here, right? I did that. And so just by doing that uh, in a Docker Compose file, I now have a portable self-contained SQL Server database that will run, that I can use to run all my tests against. And right now I'm only running uh, read-only tests, which would work fine with a shared database. But, but very soon I might start running things where they also manipulate the data. Um, maybe not for this project, but in definitely in other places I'm planning on using this. Um, I'll have tests that will also, you know, add add data or, or even change data uh, as part of their test suite. So having an easy way to, to package up that test database with your source code uh, so that you can run it in the build environment, that's pretty cool. Okay, so there we go. Finished building the container. What's it doing now? Wasn't happy about something. Uh, run the test script. Something blew up. All right. Service test failed to build. The command returned. All right. So trying to do a slash s slash c chmod on wait didn't work. chmod is not recognized. Oh, that's because I'm running on a Windows container now. Right, but no, it should be the same container. Okay, the whole appeal of Docker is that it's the same on anything. So whether I run it from a Windows machine or from... A Linux machine, it should behave the same. Run chmod plus x. Wait. Chmod is not recognized as an internal or external command. Mod. Same issue. Remove it, move it, find it, CH mod it. GitHub issue. It's from two years ago. I wonder if it's been fixed. Oh no, still open. All right, so I wonder if this is my problem. Default shell, so I push it on it quickly. All right, this is last touched a year ago. Not sure I even need that ch mod. Everything works fine on my machine, so why is it working differently out here? If 
five of six, CH mod, not recognized. So I'm running on a Windows build agent, but I'm running Docker in a Unix container. It can be confusing. And that Unix container chmod command works perfectly fine when I run it here. I don't know if I need it though. I haven't tried it without it. I got it from somebody else. So maybe I don't even need it? I'd probably get a different error now, but let's, let's well let's first try it on my machine. That'll be a lot faster. So let's run this. Let's see if it blows up when it tries to call wait. Uh did it wait? It didn't do the wait. Yeah, that did not work. Um there you go. Permission denied right there. Okay, so I need the CH mod. Can't just get rid of it. So how do I get around this Docker issue? And why is it only happening on the server? Guess what? C C H mod plus X wait. That's not useful. Um, there's another one. I think I saw this one already. Same issue. The default shell has been shell. This is where the permission is not being set correctly. Actually, a problem. You can just change to use bin bash. It might work. Mm -hmm. Run bin bash. That's actually handy. Like to see what's in that folder as part of my script. So instead of that, I'm going to run that and I'm going to chmod on slash wait 
and uh, comment you back out. So save that and let's run it locally. All right, cool. Shows me the folder. Shows me the dash x. Uh, stop, stop, stop. I want to see. All right, so here we go. Um, slash weight's not in here though, so it's not really showing me anything. I guess I have to do an ls this la on slash weight, maybe. ls dash la slash weight, maybe. And that. I think that might work. There it is. Perfect. Awesome. So, what that did, it uh, fixed my problem, added the execute permission, um, and hopefully this all works 100%. Yay. Alright, cool. So, let's go push that up. Uh, fixing chmod issue. see what this does. This is nice. Um, don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Occasionally I do close tabs. Uh, I still need that. Let's go to builds. And I've got about five minutes left before I have to get back to other tasks. Um, no error information where it failed. Oh, it didn't fail. Are you talking about the, uh, the previous build? The previous build, it told me what the error was. Um, let's go look at that, I'll show you. So here, error code 1, right? But if I click on it, it shows me details. And the details said here, chmod not recognized as a command. Can you see that? It's a small print, I apologize. Um, but here it says the command cmd slash s slash the chmod return non zero code, right? So chmod's bombing for some reason. Uh, so I fixed that by using the bash shell instead. So it works locally, um, and we'll see in a second if it works in Azure DevOps. So. Uh, we're going to build, this should be quick, right, yeah, it wasn't red, alright, there we go, run our test script, so this is where, we'll see if it works, so it has to build the docker container from the SDK image with my test project. Integration test happens in which server? The integra integration tests run from the uh, Docker container that's being built right now. So the Docker file that's in my uh, project that you can see uh, here. I don't open the file. Uh, here? Here we go. So this Docker file right here, this is what's being built right now. This is going to copy all my test stuff. It's going to copy everything, really. Um, but then it's going to run .NET test, right? So there's two servers involved from a Docker perspective, uh, and it's in this Docker Compose. So this one has the tests in it, and it basically has all my all the code that's in this repo is in this this one, and this other one is just the database. That's all it is. It's just SQL Server. So I can connect to it, I can add data to it, I can create databases, create tables, um, and then uh, run my test against that data once I've created it. Don't need this, don't need this. All right. So this part takes some time, because it actually every time has to build the container. Um, and so it has to pull down this image, and this image is a few gigabytes, so... Um, the good news is it's it's running in Azure and it's talking to Azure, so it should be fairly quick.
This is not going to be done before 2 o'clock, but uh, it's alright. Yeah, the DB is running in Docker. Exactly. That's the point of this. So I'm building... I'm using a Docker container for SQL Server, which is actually running on Linux, of all things. Uh, and that's what I was just showing you here in the uh, Docker file. Here. Uh, no, sorry, in the Docker Compose. This is the image that we're using. So this is Microsoft SQL Server running on Ubuntu. And in my tests, the very first thing my tests are doing is calling ensure database created right here and that will seed that database with the information I need so here's my connection string right here so I'm going to connect to database I'm going to talk to sample database and if this database does not exist then this ensure created line will create it and then after it creates it it will also make sure that the data has the, the the data the default data that it should have that default data is defined here so inside on model creating I'm saying Hey, this author here, it's got this data right here that I told it, Steve Smith, and then it's going to create a blog, and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to say it has this test blog, and when it creates the posts, I actually go and create 101 posts, and it adds all of those at once to it. And you see that in the output. So when I run this thing locally, there's a ton of verbose output. I can clean that up a bit. But one of the things you notice here is that it's creating the database somewhere. Uh, it's, it's scrolled off. But after I delete the database, you'll see it gets created. These things are all actually queries. No problem. Alright, so let's see. How close are we? Oh, it blew up. Man. What do we do now? Is it chmod again? Step 5 of 6, run this bash thing. System cannot find the path specified. Path to what? Slash wait is there. Maybe bin bash is not there. Because I'm running on Windows, so that's probably what the issue is. But... It's... Mm, it's a Windows build agent, but it's running this command inside a Docker container. The Docker container is going to be the same OS for everybody. Um, so it shouldn't be a Windows thing, should it? I can't find the path specified, but you're not going to tell me whether it's this path or this path. I'm also not sure why it tries to do this twice. It's like, here, let me build the tests, and then it blows up, and it's like, oh, well, all right, let me build the test again. So this, this add command should have added slash wait. And if, add, if that's there, then it should work. System can't find the path specified. I wonder if it's bash that I can't find. Docker uh, bin bash not found. Why does Docker say I can't execute bash? Not found it does not exist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Most likely not the correct error. Da, 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 da. Looks like the does not found or does not exist. Mm -hmm. Not seeing it. Not sure why that's not working. I gotta troubleshoot it some more. I'm gonna have to call it for this uh, week though. So let me pop over to Twitch dashboard and see. I think C Sharp Fritz is still running right now, isn't he? Um, so let's try a 
dashboard. And we will jump back to, I think, C Sharp Fritz. Because he needs more people. No, not Call of Duty. 141 people watching him. I've got like 10, but thank you all for being here. Uh, if you want to follow more stuff with, with .NET Core, code quality, testing, Azure DevOps, Microsoft reference samples, feel free to follow. I'm pretty much uh, only on for a couple hours on Fridays these days, typically. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up now. I'm going to raid uh, over to C Sharp Fritz. He is building some cool stuff with uh, Blazor, I think, but we'll find out in a minute. I'll pop in there too and just say hi, and uh, that'll be it for this week. This stuff will be up on my YouTube probably later today, and have a good weekend. I'll talk to you maybe next week. Thanks. Don't disappear until you get raided into C-Sharp Fritz. Then you can leave. That way he sees how many people I send him. Raid now. Do it. Alright, did that. Now I gotta shut down OBS.